Hey YouTube, I found a Dyson V6 cordless vacuum cleaner in the trash. It looks like the only problem with it is the batteries were worn out. To be honest, unless you already have the tools and the time to do this, it probably isn't worth it to replace the 18650 cells in the battery, and you're better off buying a battery directly from Dyson. Just in case you're wondering, this took about two to two and a half hours in real time to replace the batteries. I did in fact already have all the tools and some Panasonic 3400 milliamp hour batteries already. So I wanted to see, one, how difficult this was going to be to replace, and two, upgrade the battery capacity while doing so. To replace the cells in the battery, you'll need six 18650 battery cells, very good soldering iron, or even better, a battery welder, a flathead screwdriver, multiple pry tools, a pair of pliers, and a lot of patience. To remove the battery from the vacuum, there are two Torx screws one near the charging plug and one behind the plastic bin that contains the vacuumed up particles. You'll need to remove that bin and there's a screw between the bin and the handle section of the vacuum cleaner itself. I'll put up a picture of where these screws are located since I forgot to record a video of me removing the battery pack from the Dyson. As you'll see it's a pain to get the plastic housing off but there's three tabs on the end of each side of the battery pack. I'll put up an image showing the area where the tabs are so that you can get an idea of what areas to pry on to get the gray housing apart. I saw a 3D printed battery removal tool on Thingiverse, but I troubled printing it out and even when I was able to, the tool seemed too brittle or flimsy to use. I'll put a link down in the description below in case you want to try and use that. Once you're able to pry the housing off, you'll need to separate the battery cells from the outer plastic cover. Carefully yank it out and both housings should separate completely. Be careful not to damage any of the wiring or circuitry and don't lose the button and spring that is on the vertical section of the battery. With the outer cover removed, I wanted to check the voltage of the batteries, and most of them were on the lower side despite being charged, so more than likely these batteries have significant wear. Now on to replacing the battery cells. There's metal strips that connect the battery to the battery management circuit board and they're welded on the battery side. I don't know of any other way of getting these metal strips off besides prying with the screwdriver and bending them with pliers other than completely replacing these metal tabs. 
I don't know of any other way of getting these metal strips off besides prying with the screwdriver and bending them with pliers, other than completely replacing the metal strips. I opted to pry the strips off and filled in the voids with solder. Once all strips are pried off from the battery, you can remove them by pushing down on the tab holding the battery in and sliding them out the side. Some of the batteries were pretty stuck in there, so I had to use a decent amount of force to get them out. Be careful when doing this as to not pierce or damage the battery since it could cause the battery to catch on fire or explode. The 1860 cells used in this battery pack are Sony VTC4 batteries with a capacity of 2100 milliamp hours. The 18650 cells that I'll be replacing them with are Panasonic NCR 18650B batteries that have a 3400 milliamp hour capacity. Therefore, we should have a 38% increase in battery capacity which will give us more time to vacuum between charges. The only disadvantage to the Panasonic batteries is that they have a lower continuous discharge rate, but this shouldn't be an issue. If you are concerned about this, you may want to pick up 18650 cells with a higher continuous discharge rate. When installing the new batteries, take note of the polarity of the old battery that was taken out. The new battery needs to be installed the same way, otherwise you can damage the batteries, the battery management circuit board, or cause an electrical fire. As I mentioned earlier, it is better to weld the nickel strips back onto the battery, but if you only have a soldering iron like me, you may want to run the iron at a hotter temperature and minimize how much the cell is heated up. Also make sure to use solder flux and tin the battery and metal strips first before soldering the metal strips onto the battery. The reason you want to tin the metal strips and the battery is so that it allows you to solder the strips to the battery ends much quicker than heating up both first and then applying solder.
I soldered on the first side and checked voltages to make sure the battery was properly soldered to the metal strips and making good contact. As you can see, I had to go back and re-solder a couple of strips to the battery. As I mentioned before, just make sure you're careful with how much heat you're applying to the battery since you can cause permanent damage to the battery. I then soldered the strips on the other side but left the main positive and negative strips off and made sure everything was okay there as well. To check voltages you want to measure each strip and make sure that the voltage for each battery measures 3.6 to 4.2 volts depending on how much the batteries have been charged. Then you want to make sure the voltages are in multiples of 3.6 to 4.2 volts to make sure they are correctly soldered to form a series connection. For example, B1 will measure 3.6 volts, B2 will measure 7.2 volts, B3 10.8 volts, all the way up to B6 which should measure out to 21.6 volts. You'll see which metal strips are B1 through B6 by looking at the battery management circuit board. They are each marked individually. If all voltages look normal, solder on the main positive and negative battery terminals from the circuit board to the first and last battery cell. And then measure the top two prongs on the top of the battery pack where the battery attaches to the vacuum and make sure it reads around 21.6 volts. If all goes well, you can start reassembling the battery pack which is the reverse of how it's taken apart. Of course I misplaced the spring so I didn't get to film putting the battery pack fully back together, but you get the idea. If you know anyone that needs to or wants to try replacing the battery on their Dyson vacuum, please share this video. 
Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.